Jim Simons was born in Massachusetts in the United States of America on April the 25th, 1938. Simons is born into an American Jewish family and is the only child of Marcia and Matthew Simons. Jim Simons has a great childhood and grew up with huge dreams and ambitions. Simons also continuously overachieved academically throughout his childhood and he is seen as a young genius with enormous potential. In particular, his mathematical ability is extraordinary. As a child, were you good at mathematics? Like, was, was mathematics a natural thing for you? Which yeah, is... it was very natural. I, and I always liked it. I liked counting. I liked continually multiplying things by two. Although by the time I got to 1,024 or whatever it is, I was I had enough of it. Uh, but uh, I liked I liked math. I discovered as a very young kid, maybe four, something called Zeno's paradox. Kind of a, a profound thought for a, for a very little boy. When I got to high school, we started with you know plane geometry, proofs and theorems. That's where I really got gripped. That I really loved that. I liked everything about math. I loved learning the formulas for the volume of, of a sphere, four-thirds pi r cubed. I always thought that was a great, uh, a great formula. Incredibly, at the age of only 23 years old, Simons achieved a PhD in mathematics from Berkeley. Jim Simons continues to make huge advances in mathematics, which eventually leads to extraordinary discoveries in modern physics. The field that I worked in was called differential geometry. And differential geometry is geometry, but it's the geometry of curved spaces. And the basic object to study is what's called a manifold. It was very nice geometry. I pushed on with it and we defined some things called differential characters, which was a, another chapter uh, with working with a guy named Cheeger. But the churn simons invariance, about 10 years later, the physicists got a hold of it. And it wasn't just string theory, as I subsequently developed, it was kind of all areas of physics, including condensed matter theory. Uh, even some uh, astronomers seem to want to look at those terms. It's now 1964, and Jim Simons has begun to work with the US government. And, in particular, Simons is working closely with US National Security Agency, the NSA. The exact details of Jim Simon's work still remains classified. However, what is known is that he is working to break codes and has made astonishing breakthroughs with cryptography and code breaking. I spent four years at a place called the Institute for Defense Analyses down in Princeton, which was a super secret government based, national security agency based uh, place for code cracking trying to break the enemies, whoever it was, Russia, I guess, code machines and cipher machines. I also learned about computers and algorithms uh, in the code cracking field. And I did one thing there that was quite good, because I can't tell you what it was. It's all classified. So I had a good career there, both doing mathematics and learning about the fun of computer modeling. After working, for the US government, Simons goes on to work numerous jobs, including at Stony Brook University and IBM. However, Jim Simons was not satisfied with working regular jobs. He wants to do something extraordinary and put his exceptional intellect to use. Jim Simons decides he wants to become the best market trader in the world. Soon, the famous Medallion Fund is born. The Medallion Fund is very unique because the fund is closed to outside investors and employs specialists with no financial backgrounds. Instead, employing mathematicians, physicists, signal processing experts and statisticians. And so we would bring in smart folks and uh, they didn't know anything about finance. Uh, but they learned. 
What was your cr employment criteria then? If they knew nothing about finance, what were you looking for in them? Uh, someone with a PhD in physics and who'd had uh, five years out and had written a few good papers and was obviously a smart guy, or in astronomy, uh, or in mathematics, or in statistics. Uh, someone who had done science and done it well and was interested in, you know, uh, applying his mind to, uh, you know, modeling markets and making money. And we have about a hundred PhDs working for the firm. Simons soon realizes that he can make mathematical models from data he had been collecting and he can use his model to make enormous sums of money in the markets. There's something called the efficient market theory, which says that there's nothing in the data, let's say price data, which will indicate anything about the future, because the price is sort of always right. The price is always right in some sense. But that's just not true. So there are anomalies in the data, even in the price history data. Gradually, we found more and more and more and more anomalies. And you put together uh, a collection of these subtle anomalies and you begin to get something that will predict pretty well. The system, as it is today, is, is extraordinarily elaborate. But it's not a whole lot of, it, you know, it's, it's what's called machine learning. So you find things that are predictive. That last part uh, takes some fairly sophisticated applied mathematics. It's a big computer model. The Medallion Fund eventually goes on to become the most successful fund of all time. Although Simon shuns the limelight and rarely gives interviews, his extraordinary achievements bring him to the top of the trading world. So I think I found Wall Street's biggest secret. It's called the Medallion Fund and it did something that shouldn't even be considered possible. It cracked the secret code of the stock market. In 1988, a man by the name of Jim Simons and his company Renaissance Technologies created what is considered today to be the best investment anyone could have ever made with the best track record of all time. This is the Medallion Fund's inception in 1988. The fund has had a 66% average annual return. Putting this into perspective, Warren Buffett's renowned Berkshire Hathaway has made only a 20% annual return. This astonishing achievement has certainly cemented Jim Simons' legacy as the best trader of all time. Renaissance Technologies is the most profitable hedge fund in history. The single most successful hedge fund in the history of the industry. 86% on average since 1988. They were very, very smart. Yes, they got very rich. Very, very, very smart. And very smart and very rich, yeah. And, 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 and very high grade, by the way. Yeah. Uh, Jim Simons. When it comes to investing, nobody holds a candle to Jim Simons. Not Warren Buffett, not Stephen Cohen, not George Soros. Simon's company, Renaissance Technologies, has a signature hedge fund called Medallion that has generated average annual returns of 66% for 30 years. To put this another way, renowned economist Bradford Cornell points out that if you had invested $100 in Medallion in 1988, 30 years later, that would have turned into $398.7 million. Jim Simons is best known for his remarkable trading achievements, but he is also known for his philanthropy. Simons and his wife, Marilyn, co-founded the Simons Foundation, a charitable organisation that supports projects related to education and health. They have also established the Simons Foundation Orders of Research initiative. Stony Brook also announced that it had received a $500 million endowment gift for the Simons Foundation, the second largest gift ever to a public university. They've also established Avalon Nature Preserve, a 216-acre nature preserve in memory of his son, Paul. In total, 
Jim Simons has given over four billion dollars to philanthropic causes, which is regarded by many as one of his greatest achievements. Sadly, Jim Simons died in New York City on May 10th, 2024, at the age of 86 years old. Simons died peacefully, surrounded by his family. At the time of his death, Jim Simons was one of the wealthiest people on the planet, with an astonishing net worth of more than $30 billion. Jim Simons will go down in history as one of the greatest American hedge fund managers, investors, mathematicians and philanthropists of all time. And he is still often described as the greatest investor on Wall Street and more specifically the most successful hedge fund manager of all time. The short talk is this. I did a lot of math, I made a lot of money, and I gave almost all of it away. That's the story of my life. Now, <laughs> it's a good story, but it's short. I hope you found Jim Simons' is inspirational life story useful. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. To sharp. The training is rewarding, they're successful, they have their life in order. It's just simple. Get your life in order.